Why does a book fail to become a movie? If somebody wants to adapt a book and they think they buy the rights, whatever it is, and just somehow doesn't translate, doesn't work out. Well, there are hundreds of reasons why that can happen, but, but they come back in, in categories that, that you get used to. Uh, every book that's submitted to Hollywood is what's called covered. And uh, in my various webinars, I talk about coverage, and uh, coverage is a industry term for a, a story report where a reader in the story department of a agency or of a production company or a studio or um, any, any part of the business where stories go to be covered. And they're covered because the executives who make the decisions can't possibly read all the stories that come in. Too many things are submitted. Too many stories are submitted. And in, in the coverage, it covers every single part of the story, from a one-line pitch of the story to the genre of the story, the category, the length of the story, the quality of the writing, the dialogue, the characters, supporting characters, you know, main characters, supporting characters, plot, etc. So you get a full report in four or five pages that analyzes the story. And, and, the, and, and it ends with a recommendation, pass, consider with development, you know, uh, or uh, accept with development or just accept. And, and accepts are extremely rare. I mean, probably one to two percent uh, are in that category. And the reason that most books are turned down, I've already mentioned some of them, but has to do with uh, not clear who the protagonist is, not strong enough antagonist, too many characters, uh, if you can't figure out what's important, what's not important, uh, too much repetition, the dialogue, the characters don't sound different from each other, they all sound the same. And we all know from literary, you know, literature graduate school that one of the common questions that you asked is, you're just given lines of dialogue from plays and asked to identify the character by one line of dialogue. Because the great playwrights make their dialogue characteristic to each character. And Lady Macbeth, Macbeth would not be sounding like Juliet. You know, there there always be clear who's talking. And and that's another reason for frequent turndowns. The audience isn't big enough. You know, a story about Latvian Americans take in a, in a small neighborhood in Detroit, you know, may get made as an indie movie. If, if, you know, somebody like Meryl Streep wants to be in it because she's Latvian, you know. But other than that, the chances are that Fox is not going to develop it because they're looking at audience appeal. You know, they're looking at demographics. So any of those reasons and all of those reasons are, are, are reasons why a book gets turned down. Uh, sometimes a book is too internal and Screenwriters struggle with it, but they can't figure out how to externalize the constant thinking and philosophizing of a character. There are examples of books that have done that well, uh, like The World According to Garth, you know, is an example, but they're usually internal stories are very hard to turn into films. Uh, and in, when, what happens is halfway through the attempt to do that, you realize you're inventing all the dialogue and then how much, that, and therefore, how true is this movie to the book at all? You know, is it even the same book? Because if the book did everything internally and you're inventing all the dialogue, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, so there are a lot of reasons, but they all have to do with, um, with drama. Drama is about scenes, and the scene is, which is, is a place and time in which there is conflict. Two forces come together in conflict, and the conflict is resolved. Uh, and that scene is the unit of drama. And if the scenes in a book are not clear enough, scenes are very distinguished in books. I mean, in Vonnegut, for example, his scenes can be two sentences long. In uh, you know, in, in Faulkner, his scenes can be twenty pages long. And, and but but still, there'll be clear scenes. My favorite example of a, I think the shortest story in, the, in American literature is, uh, goes like this. Have you lived next door to a man who's trying to play, to learning to play the viola? 
That's what she asked the police when she handed them the empty revolver. It, it's, a, it's a short story by uh, <clears throat> Richard Browdigan. And uh, but there's a whole scene, right? A whole story, a whole scene told in a couple of lines and just as tour de force to show that you don't need a lot of words to make a scene. Uh, we get it right away. And, and that's, drama is a scene like that. And there are two kinds, two components of drama, as I talk about in my various books. I mean, one of them is action. She hands them the empty revolver. And the other is dialogue. Have you tried living next door to a person learning to play the viola? You know, that, those are the two components of action and drama, dialogue and action. And dialogue like, good morning, how are you doing today, is not dramatic. And yet, many novels are filled with it, uh, with that kind of dialogue. So the great novelists that have been made into great movies have vital dialogue that is really action dialogue. Like it's a line from Hemingway that I love to quote in creative writing classes, these two people sitting near a train station, and at one point she says to him, would you please, 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 please stop talking. And that's a great example of a piece of dialogue that is pure action. You know that there is no hope for their relationship after she says that. And, and, and it goes on to say, the man did not say anything for a moment. Then he asked, would you like a beer? <laughs> and, and we know, you know, it's all over between them. But there's an example of how great dialogue is. You know, like from <clears throat> Chinatown, you're, you're, my mother, my sister, my mother, my sister, my mother, my sister, remember that? He said, tell the truth. And she keeps saying the same thing over and over again until he finally realizes that she's telling the truth. And that's when you have, you, you know that the writer knows what he's doing. And that's why, that's why screenplay writing is so much more difficult than novelists, because there are the harshest rules in writing screenplays. And, and the harsh rule really is only one harsh rule. Every single word in the screenplay is connected to every other word. And in a novel, that's just not true. I mean, you can't, you know, in a 600-page novel, it just can't be true, and it isn't true. But it is true in a screenplay, because if you say a word and the audience, you know, leaves the theater and they loved it otherwise, you know at the bar they're going to say, but why did he say that one thing to him? Like, it made no sense. You know, take care of yourself. Why did he say that at the end of that scene? And they won't let go of that until they figure it out. And if they can't figure it out, then they go, there's something wrong with that story, you know? Because it's all, you know, like you can't focus a camera on a red hat in a movie without making that pay off later. And, and that's just not true of novels. For one thing, novels kind of float in, in the air of the reader. You know, as you read the book, you paint pictures in your head, and movies are much more demanding than that because they have to make decisions. Like, what does she look like? Uh, and you, you have to cast her with the right color hair. And, you know, one of the most famous lines in history is from the Iliad when Everyone knows Helen of Troy is supposed to be the most beautiful woman who ever lived, right? But Homer is not going to deal with that because that's just impossible. So what happens is, <laughs> it says when she appeared, he says the elders of Troy were standing on the walls of Troy, chattering like locusts with each other, until Helen, till, till a hush fell among them as Helen appeared. And one of them says, Terrible indeed is her likeness to that of an immortal goddess. And that is the entire description of Helen of Troy, which, you know, can't be beat because it leaves it completely to your imagination what she looked like. And he wasn't about to say she was, you know, five foot two, red hair, blue eyes, etc., which immediately will kill her beauty in some people's minds. And, and so it's... That's why drama is so much more challenging. It's the ultimate expression of storytelling, and it's why movies are, you know, hugely powerful instruments around the world.